Okay, uh, welcome everybody to the Belgrade Planning Board. Uh, first order of business is for um, board members to identify themselves. Oh, and, I, and here comes the rest of the gang. So. We're just about to identify ourselves. We're on the record. So we're just doing the roll call. Sure. So go ahead. Oh, Sarah and I get. <laughs> Nick Sakara. Oh, Rich Baker. Penny Burrell. Right. And he's our new member, George Seal. Craig Alexander. And also here is Hans. Go to board for Hans something. In the audience, we have John Slosher and uh, Jonathan Bourne. Anna Beach. Tracy Martin. Don Higgins. And then that we have Swing Richards. Jordan Richards. Okay. Online, we have Wendy Slaughter. Yeah, I'm sorry. So we we say this for the minutes in there. So the person that in the minutes know who we are, and then we can uh, correct, she can correctly settle our names. So uh, my apologies for the delay. Um, um, so we're going, we're moving to new business. Yeah. Um, with the application of uh, Mr. Josh Lusher, location 90 Pine Beach Road, and the purpose is to rebuild existing camp, reducing the footprint. Um, so we have a note here from a site visit that we um, did on. It was two weeks ago, actually. Uh, so August 24th. 24th. And we met there around 4.15 or so. Um, and um, uh, during the visit, uh, we confirmed the uh, proximity to the lake. And then also um, discussed um, options for Mrs. Lutter. And he uh, proposed that the, the footprint of the transit structure, he would move it back to the 20 feet, 20 foot mark from the uh, high water mark. And so that would he would be able to retain the original height of the structure. Um, he also then, then had forward to us. Um, a new uh, printout of where the location of the structure is going to be, where he will end up relocating um, the uh, septic tank uh, back um, um, about eight feet set here. I'll move it back so that um, it'll, it'll be at least eight feet. Beyond because the minimum setback is septic, I believe it's eight feet okay. from the bed. And that uh, will actually um, help with the concept of not touching any of the mature trees there. Um, the mature trees still, are going to still have to take some trees. Yeah, yeah there's but... two over here that he needs to take. Yes, four, three. So, um, with that, I open the floor for discussion for the board. Ms. Foster, is there anything else you want to add uh, to explain your, you know, amendment to your original application um, before we get into questions? Uh, I think the, the site visit um, kind of helped me clarify, you know, some of the code that was pointed out at the last meeting of the planning board about height restrictions and where I could add, um, I'll call it volume, um, because I was unaware at the last meeting. Clarified that, um, and I think that with what I would, what I'm proposing to build, um, moving it back seemed like the most uh, 
yeah, the, the best alternative for me because I really didn't want to uh, you know, cut out half the second floor to keep it as close to the lake as it is. And in retrospect, moving it back is actually better for the lake because being able to revegetate re in front of the camp more and making sure that the slope around and behind the camp um, goes away, you know, is graded away from the lake so, so as to keep any runoff from the garage and or and the camp um, from going directly to the lake. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Baker? I wasn't at the site, but I was just a uh, question. Uh, I noticed that uh, you showed three trees, a double trunk one and two pine trees. Are they because of safety hazard or is it because of just moving it back they're too close to the structure? The, the two pines are, are too close uh, to the structure because I'll be disturbing. Uh, there's some large rocks between the existing structure and those two pines. Mm -hmm. And I've got to I've got to take those out or bring them down. And I'll be disturbing the the, the, uh, the soil around the roots. Mm -hmm. um, I will say that those trees, uh, just because of neighboring trees are bald on one side. Mm -hmm. So I'm really not taking a lot of canopy down mm -hmm. by taking those. And the double trunk oak, um, the one closest to camp actually comes at the, the main trunk comes up about 20, 25 feet and then actually tilts towards the uh, camp. And that, that to me, I don't, I don't want to make this investment and have that tree come down. And we probably will disturb because that's a, you know, it's a pretty large tree and the roots go far off of that. I'm probably going to disturb the roots around there. Um, so it's kind of a double whammy. It would be dangerous to my camp, and I, I, I may end up, may come down in five years because of what I'm doing with the process like that. And there's plenty of trees in canopy, and um, replanting forage, replacing. It's, it's clearly not a hazard tree. Okay. Rich, you know, it's okay. my, uh, but but it is. It will be in the way of the construction. Uh, in, in the way of the, the new location of the Kenya. Yeah. Um, and it could because be. it, you know, otherwise there's branches that would, you know, they'd have to take at least a half of the tree down mm -hmm. just to make yeah. the space. So yeah. okay. at that point, you know, since it's a hardwood, the, the rest of it is probably rock. The reason I asked the question is that the standards for moving or replacing trees, if he needs to replace trees, and again, not being there, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, the standards are a little different for replacing it and trees that are removed because of the structure with replaces hazard trees. So yeah, right. right. So no, it's not a hazard tree right. by any means. Uh, yeah. Doesn't come close to meeting definition. It's actually quite a magnificent oak tree, um, but um, but it will be in the way. And it would be considered a hazard tree uh, with the new location. Uh -huh. yeah. So uh, for just for the record, I uh, mistakenly stated that the trees were going to stay, but the four trees are going to be the two, three trees are going to be removed. Correct. Right. Next questions, Mr. Surgeon. Call you late, so I'm not too sure where we're at. So we we are. Sorry about that. We just opened. I described what we need to. Uh, uh, side visit right. and the changes that uh, Mr. Swarton have proposed. Right. And I just opened the floor for questions or concerns from the board. Are you all good with what was presented with the uh, new uh, form that was presented? Uh, I'm familiar with that. Right. Uh, and what my question is on the um, passage treaties, uh, the code enforcement, the code enforcement officer has jurisdiction over hazardous trees as well, right? Yeah, probably yeah. that has. Yeah, I mean, yes, but it's part of this process. Yeah, at, at, okay, what I mean So I at, can do it individually for somebody just as a tree problem. Right. But this is part of the permitting. Right. Process. So uh, when, so hazardous trees are also taken into consideration 
after the application has been approved and maybe a year from now there's a hazardous tree, whatever, if the, the applicant wants, if the property owner wants to discuss that with someone here at the uh, uh, town, would go to the, the code enforcement officer. Okay. All right. I just want to make that clear. All right. Thanks. Okay. Um, a couple things. Uh, overall, you've done a really nice job of addressing the uh, issues in terms of meeting the performance standards of the uh, ordinance. The one thing um, that still stands out to me is the maximum height standard. Uh, at the site visit, you mentioned you were having him and Lumber redesign uh, the structure so that uh, it would meet the maximum height standard, which is... Uh, uh, 20 feet within 75 feet of the shorefront or the height of the existing structure. And I don't have that. I don't know if you submitted it. I, I have not submitted it because it, what they submitted to me between the last meeting and now is not, is not accurate. But as I mentioned at the last meeting, um, it, it is my intention um, and, I, and, I, and I believe you could set it as a condition of approval that it will not exceed the height of the current structure, which is my intent. Yeah, I, th I think we could probably do that. Um, I, don't, I usually am not that wild about handling major items in terms of the construction of the camp that way, but I think we're at a point where that would probably work. Um, the other uh, issue, of course, we talked about at the last meeting is, and can handle this as a, uh, a uh, condition of approval as well as uh, the, I, I think you mentioned it, but we still don't have it on your application form, uh, who the DEP certified contractor is gonna be in their certification number. So we can do that as a condition of approval as was stated at the last meeting, Thanks. unless you wanna fill it in on the application form now. And you're, you're, you're referencing the excavation contractor? Yes. yes. Dave Stevens. It's, it's Dave Stevens, but I number 784. Okay, well, maybe you have the original application, right? So there's a couple things that you're going to have to change on your the application that's before us at the moment, which is the same as last time because it's now inaccurate versus this. Uh, and, and what? So let me go on, and, and I think it'll become apparent that so that one that's one thing. The other is. Uh, all the numbers for the present uh, for the proposed structure square footage is, has now changed. No. no, no, the square footage has not changed from the original plan. So it's still 980. 984. Okay, all right. But the, uh, that was just because I couldn't tell if it was 1008 or 980 from the drawing. From your drawing. Actually, this. Uh, it's within the margin of error, I realize. Basically, the, the footprint in the of the original proposed structure um, has not changed at all. I'm just moving it back, and, and it's it's hard to do on this. I try to do this. Yeah. So that I no, can, you explained that last time, and but, but basically, it's 28 wide by 35 and a half feet deep. Okay, um, and and that's nine eighty four. So, but is, what we still need to have you do is correct the number on the application because it, it it was wrong last time and it's wrong this time because it's seventeen sixty two versus nine eighty. Okay, but as I mentioned at the last meeting, the question is vague on on your application. It does not ask for footprint. It asks for square footage. I'll concede that point. But um, the uh, it, 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 but what's intended there is the footprint. That's what information we need there. And I hate to and have this in a year, or two years from now, be confused as to what was actually approved. It, would it be possible on the original that is in possession of the code enforcement officer to change the number to ninety four right now? Yes. You can change it right now, and that's what I'm suggesting. Okay. Um, just so there's no confusion in the future. I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy and to just do that. Date it and initial it. You want me to do it now, or, or should we do yeah, it? That'd be fine. Do you, have, yeah. do you have any more? So we just want to make sure. 
Yes, I, do you have anything else? else today? Perhaps the changes that you would like to do in application. Oh, no, no, that, no okay. that's it. I, I just wanted to make sure the drawings and the application form uh, have the same numbers. Is it 994? I think it's 994. Okay. So that is the so that the has a DP uh, contractor name will be at, is added to already. Yeah. Good. Well, okay. uh, yes, I got to verify that I'm pretty thirty seven eighty four. But I, there's a lot of contractors in my name. Mm -hmm. So um, that's, that's why. I okay. All right. So I don't have anything else either. So. So with that, we can close the process of the application and say that the application is complete. Um, so we, we need to vote that, that, that application is complete before going to the um, finding of facts. Well, we actually do all that at, with the finding of facts. And yeah, the, this is not like the commercial ordinance. Group. I know we use that. So there's no formal process. So, so then we will proceed then. The, we deem the, the application complete, and now we'll proceed to the finding of facts. Thank you. And Don't mind, just for the record, sure. we've established 994 as the footprint, but what is the existing height? 21, isn't it? 2110. All right. Condition height to be less than or equal to 21 feet. Mm -hmm. I think yeah, all contract I'm going to contract them. I put in David that. Stevens' name right. already. Um, yeah, so my intention is to offer a condition of approval to that effect so if it's easily enforced as necessary. Okay. So, uh, yeah, the paperwork for the. Uh, Finding facts? Yep. Finding facts. Uh, that's the application of the record. Okay. Okay. So um, you, can, you can start signing the application here. Yeah? Yes. Right. Sign. We need to sign. Well, we don't sign. Well, well we don't sign yet. We haven't approved it. Okay. So um, this is going to take some time as well, 10 15 minutes. All right. Just bear with us. All right. So again, we're going to go through the final facts and conclusion of law. Uh, it's an application for a shoreline permit. The applicant is John Slosher, and the applicant address again is 90 Pine Beach Road, map 42, lot 15. And we start with the finding of facts. The application on the day applied for a shoreline permit to rebuild existing camp due to poor structural conditions of existing camp. The application was presented to the planning board on 8 17, 2023. Its final facts and conclusion of law were developed in conjunction with consideration of the permit application. Here we go with the conclusions of law. Based upon the application materials, testimony, statements, evidence, documents, and other materials submitted in and the above finding of fact, the Belgrade Planning Board finds that the project is permitted under section 14, table one in the ordinance and further makes the following conclusions based on the applicable provisions in section 16D of the ordinance. Will maintain safe and healthy conditions. By vote, the board approved this standard was met based on um, public record. Public record. So we said that the board approved 
based on public record submissions by both by the following boss we're gonna vote. So uh, Mr. Zakara. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Uh, Sturgeon. Yes. Mr. Seal. Yes. Mr. Alexander. Yes. And Ms. Sarah and Get also say yes and can say we're gonna keep uh, Mr. Baker and Mrs. Penny out of the voting process. All right? Because yeah. the Mrs. Penny uh Penny Morale was not in the last two meetings of this application. And we're all her next We've got a full voting. All right, so that's good. So uh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> will not result in water pollution, erosion, uh, or sedimentation to surface waters. The board found the standard was met based on public record submissions and application. So we want to vote uh, that this standard was met. Mr. Sakaro? Yes. Mr. Surgeon? Yes. Mr. Seal? Yes. Mr. Alexander? Yes. And Ms. Erlange also vote yes. So it's uh, five in favor, uh, none opposed. Will not have an advert. Oops, going back to number three. I was reading number four. Number three says will adequately provide for the disposal of all wastewater. The board found the standard was met based on public records and submission and application. Answers no issues related to the movement. Um, change of location of the septic tank, right? As far as you're concerned, right? you're gonna probably use a new tank, right? That's what they would recommend. Yeah, that is gonna crumble. Mm -hmm. So, this standard talking about um, providing uh, adequate, uh, adequate providing for disposal of all wastewater. Um, we're going to vote on it. This is uh, uh, this standard is met. Uh, Mr. Sakar. Yes. Mr. Sergeant. Yes. Mr. Seal. Yes. Mr. Alexander. Yes. So five and me, Sarah, and vote yes too. So five in favor, none opposed. Number four will not have an adverse impact on spawning grounds, fishing, aquatic life, bird or other wild. Live habitat. The board found this standard was met based on fully represent applications. So we want to vote now to confirm that the standard was met. Mr. Saparo? Yes. Mr. Uh, Surgeon? Yes. Mr. Seal? Yes. Mr. Alexander? Yes. And Mr. Alan Dead also vote yes. So it's five in favor, zero, none opposed. Number five, will conserve shore cover and visual as well as actual points of access to inland waters. The board found this standard was met based again on public record submission and application. PRSA. That's a good call. Next one. I'm doing it. PRSA. So we're gonna vote now that, that the standard was met. Mr. Sakara. Yes. Mr. Surgeon. Yes. Mr. Seal. Yes. Mr. Alexander. Yes. And Sarah Langer also vote yes. Five in favor, no one opposed. Number six, will protect archaeological and historical resources as designated in comprehensive plan. So that's NA, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. That will be NA. 
So do we have to vote on that? Oh. Will avoid problems associated with flood plain develop development and use. The board found this standard was met. ERSA. So, Mr. Zakaro. Yes. Mr. Surgeon. Yes. Mr. Seal. Yes. Mr. Alexander. Yes. And me, Sarah Langan, also vote yes. It's five in favor, no one opposed. Uh, the next question, what we're going to do with it is that we're going to go through all the items in it and we will vote at the end. It's almost a total of 20 items. So I'm going to be reading them, see if they apply or not, and then we'll vote all the way at the end. So number eight says, is in conformance with the provisions of Section 15 land use standards. The board found that the standard was met based on evidence in the record and further as follows. A, minimum log, standard, log standards. Yeah. Yes, that's a um, Principal and accessory structures. Yes. Mm -hmm. Campgrounds, NA. Individual private campsites. Sure. NA. Commercial and industrial uses. NA. Mm -hmm. Parking areas. Mm -hmm. NA. Roads and driveways. Mm -hmm. Signs. Okay. NA. NA. Yeah. Yeah. Storm water runoff. <clears throat> Septic water, I'm sorry, septic waste disposal systems. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Essential services, NA. Yeah. Mineral exploration and extraction, NA. You don't have any gold there, do you? Agriculture, NA. Only lithium, right? Right. <laughs> Timber harvesting and land management roads, NA. Clearing or removal of vegetation for activities other than timber, timber, timber harvesting. That's right. Hazard trees, storm damaged trees, and dead trees removal. Not out. NA. Exceptions to clearing and vegetation removal requirements. Okay. Revegetation requirements. Yeah. Is applicable? Revegetation requirements. The most getting there. Erosion and sedimentation control. <clears throat> applicable. Shoreline stabilization, applicable. Soils, and then water quality. Yes. Applicable. Historical and archaeological sites, and then resource protection. <clears throat> All right, so we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten items that are applicable. I'm going to read them very quickly again. So, again, the board found that this standard was met based on evidence in the record and the further, further and further as follows. Minimum lot standards, principal and accessory structures, stormwater runoff, septic waste disposal systems, clearing or removal of vegetation for activity other than timber harvesting, exceptions to clearing and vegetation removal requirements, revegetation requir re requirements, erosion and sedimentation control, 
shoreline stabilization and water quality. So now we're going to vote. Mr. Sakara. So, yes. Oh, if I could just interrupt for a moment. Cool. So I think um, two possible conditions of approval might be applicable here. One is to clarify the revegetation requirement. There's um, the, the actual language that's been presented uh, doesn't make it clear that it's going to be native vegetation, which is the requirement <coughs> of ordinance. So uh, I'm going to suggest a um, condition that fills that little gap. And and secondly, both with regard to that, as well as the planting of the replacement trees, there's no timeline. And I think that would be helpful to have. And I'm going to suggest um, condition that um, have the time, the deadline, if you will, be prior to occupancy of the camp. So after all the construction is over and, and, and um, so that this is basically part of the construction. That's silent. The application style on that. So that would I add that in revegetation requirements, uh, or put that at the end of commission? No, I, at the end. I just wanted to let everybody know. Sure. Um, <clears throat> so then we will go to vote on this uh, standard. So, Mr. Zakara. Yes. Mr. Sergeant. Yes. Mr. Seal. Yes, with those two conditions that I mentioned. And Mr. Alexander. Yes. And myself, Sarah Langan, also say yes. So five in favor, zero opposed. And now we're going to the conditions of approval. So we have several of them. The first one that I'm going to jot down is um, having finalized drawing. Uh, finalized drawing will be submitted. And uh, with new instruction, uh, retaining present structural height, that will be the first condition. Okay. Before construction. Before construction. Could I just could I just ask for clarification on that? Sure. And, but the plan that was submitted, um, footprint would be unchanged, and. If you have a condition that the that the max height, the, the 2110, which is the max height of the current structure, why ask for another plan? I mean, I may get a plan that puts me at at, at uh, you know, 21.8, for example, but the builder is probably just going to go up there to make make sure that we, you know to maintain. The maximum float we can get on that roof line. So, what's the benefit of having? And I'm not trying to be argumentative, or mm -hmm. but I'm just trying to understand what what does what does that really do besides show you the the max height which you're putting in as a condition of, of this application anyway. I think it's mostly for the record of the town because if we just take what you uh, supply to us. That's, that was not the right height, if I remember it. It was not 2110. But in, the, but in the public record, there is a condition of approval saying that the building will not be the 24 feet, whatever is in the in the plan I submitted, I, but yet it would be at 2110, which we determined. I understand, and we have your word also in, in the record, but the thing is that, uh, <clears throat> Uh, how many friends were clarified? Oh, okay. Thank this you. Final drawing. So you don't feel too bad, Mr. Slusher. We make the hammers redo things too. <laughs> sure, it's okay. Um, you so, can just have them draw it at 2110. That I, way you're covered. We'll make it happen. Thank you. Um, so, just one thought on that, Donnie. Will it be acceptable to the board that he uses drawings and scratch the final number and put the, the number that's supposed to be, and then he sign it? Just a thought. So he doesn't have to go again to Bahamas and have it printed all over again. And that's the only measurement that we yeah. have. I, 
I'm not uh, sure uh, we really, to be honest with you, need another drawing. The last drawing was up to a lot of interpretation as it was because of changes in the scale caused by the reduction. So um, uh, uh, when it was photocopied, um, I personally would be okay with a straight up condition that just says the maximum uh, structure height cannot exceed 21 feet, 10 inches. I'll be fine with that too. All right. Yeah, I'm good with that. Yep. You got your wish. So I'll, what, what I will do then is uh, I just put that as a, uh, I will not ask for the final drawing and I just say that the the uh, uh, the condition will be that the new structure will be retained. Um, the new structure will retain the present structure height of 21. Okay. Yes. I mean, under worst case scenario, if for some, some reason the contractor makes an error or whatever the case might happen to be, uh, you know, we have something that Hans would be able to very clearly enforce in that condition. So I think the town would be adequately uh, protected and we'd be, you know, definitely consistent with all our previous decisions in similar situations. Or do you want any of my language for the uh, conditions? Um, sure. Well, let me read them to the board first so that we're all on the same page. Um, uh, they're just really um, the um, oops, scrap of paper. Um, uh, so they're, they're, they're the two. Uh, the uh, first deals with the replacement trees and it, it would read something like the four replacement trees shall be planted prior to the occupation of the structure. Uh, the plant the um, information, that, the application that Mr. Foster has submitted uh, already specifies that it will be coordinated with Hans, the short um, but there's um, no timeline. So that provides a timeline. So again, it would be the four replacement trees shall be- It was four or three. Four. 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 Yeah. 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 The, the oak tree is a kind of a twin bowl tree. I have no problem with four. Before? They'll be planted prior to the occupation of the structure. By the way, I, I, I thought this would be better and more flexible than in the past, we sometimes have given hard deadlines like July 1st, 2024, or something like that. But given the lateness in the season and the window that Mr. Schlosser has, short, narrow window for construction, uh, uh, I, I didn't want to use a hard, firm, date based deadline because construction may take longer than what we were thinking right at the moment. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, the second would be. Unvegetated soil, and I'll, I'll give these to you if the board's uh, um, satisfied with them. Unvegetated soil between the new structure and the lake shore shall be vegetated with native veget native vegetation, and that's the operative word because um, that was um, not included in in the uh, application submission. Uh, with native vegetation in accordance with section twelve point C. Dot five of the ordinance. Vegetation planting shall be completed prior to occupation of the new structure. Wrap it the same as the other one. Okay. So I don't know if others have objections to those, but Mr. Schlosser, brilliant. That would have exotics being, not, not that I think you're going to be doing that, but. Fine. Better to be clear. That's
all of this was actually more efficient during the pan pandemic when we were doing this all electronically. All right, thank you so much. So uh, we have already three conditions of approval. Um, number fifth will be also, uh, four will be uh, um, having the name of the uh, DEP contractor and number. Mr. Schloss has already corrected that, uh, provided that. So we are good with that one. So then uh, number four also will be uh, managed stormwater runoff of the new new or expanded structure. And yeah. you're, you're familiar with those. Uh, Instead of the player and control, control oh, and, yeah. and, and the application. Yeah. So um so do we strike that one out because it's standard in our application or uh, uh it kind of complements uh Mr. Schlosser's plan for a French drain that'll be collecting the runoff up from the roof and diverting it to um, um, that little basin, that natural basin on the on the rest of his lot. Uh, the, I say supplement because, it, for example, it has various alternative designs for French drains, uh, as well as the outfall of French drains. So those are something that might provide some useful guidance. So that, that is in section 15. Uh... 15i of the Belgrade Shore Land Zoning Ordinance, and it's basically the best management uh, practices. And you you know a lot of those. I, I guess the only question I would have: Am I supposed to am I supposed to supply board with something, or no. just follow? No, no. Just follow it. No, just follow it. No. Okay. And you already have a plan for it. Yeah. Okay. Just okay. making sure I understood. Sure. So uh, based on the above findings of fact and conclusions of law on 9-7-2023, the Town of Belgrade Planning Board uh, will approve the present uh, shoreline permit application of John Sluster. And Wendy. And Wendy. Thank you. Launcher. With the above conditions and at the meeting on 9723, develop um, with this develop uh, written final facts and conclusion law on remand from the Beverly Board of uh, Appeals and adopted these findings on 9723. Um, right. So we're going to close the final facts and we are pulling all of them together. We are pulling all of them together again with the conditions. So I'll make a motion to approve the application as amended. All right. Second. Second. All right. Uh, so, Mr. Seal, with the motion in, and Mr. Sergeant uh, seconded. So, we're going to vote. So, Mr. Zakara. Yes. Mr. Sergeant. Yes. Mr. Seal. Yes. Mr. Alexander. Yes. Ms. Arangue also vote yes. And we have an approved final uh, pass. <clears throat> 
and permits. And permits. Start signing now. I want to thank the board for the patience they've shown with me through the process. Just making, trying to make sure I understood everything. Sure. Um, no, actually, you worked really better than the parents. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll get a copy of those yeah. conditions specifically. You're going to get a copy of a lot of things. Okay. <laughs> Well, I get that tonight or so I can back tomorrow or something. I'll uh, we'll prepare them tomorrow. Um, I'm going to be in your neighborhood. I may drop them off or I might just call you and say they're available to pick up if you want. And I probably have to write a little check to the town. For the front end. No. We'll, we'll communicate tomorrow. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your responsiveness. Appreciate your service. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Good evening. I'll leave you to your business. Thank you. <laughs> so um, we move to the next item agenda, and that is for input on LD 2003 accessories dwelling units. And I suspect that the rest of the audience here is for that. No, no. Um, I believe you were the first to call, and we have two couples here with very similar questions. And I wasn't sure if they needed to go through a whole CDRO application, or I'm going to let them present their case. Um, basically, you're going to do a home operated business, correct? It was not, well, it's not really a residence. Uh, right now, it's currently my heating company. Okay. You know, and uh, we're just going to convert it to a different. Okay. Your heating company, did it ever come before the planning board for approval? No. Okay. And the idea is you want to put a sign out. Yes. So they're basically, I'm putting it to the board. And they just do what they want to do. They need to come to you to get a commercial permit to do a say. Yeah. Yep. Well, daycare and grooming. Daycare and grooming. At the same location of the yes. existing heating company. This is the um your building that's on 135, it just is. past the railroad crossing. It is. Um Gary Fuller, when he was um code enforcement officer, uh, brought this to our for us to us for discussion uh, at the time. Uh, it was constructed and uh, apparently, he had been in touch with you folks and said it was going to be uh, just for personal storage rather than for your uh, heating oil. Uh, that's, tank. that's correct. I'm just myself. I do service and maintenance. Yeah, no, and it always looked that way. It, it, it looked that way. Um, uh, so we can't, I'm not sure, I'm not quite clear whether we can say that's a, a, um, Ongoing business. Oh, it's clearly not a home occupation, not the definition in the ordinance. Uh, and it had to, the home occupation would be at their home, first off. Okay. And secondly, it would have to, um, well, if you look at the definition, you'll see that it, you know, it's for things that basically doesn't make it look like anything other than a home. Okay, so where's the but, okay. I'm sorry. Where's your business located? You know, you got you don't live there or what? No, I'm not living there now. I live in Winslow, but my uh, business address is still there. I still store equipment there. So okay, so it's it's, the big, it's, big garage. it's just a big garage. That's pretty much it. I mean, yeah, and that's exactly what it looks like. I mean, if you didn't know that it was business equipment being stored there, you wouldn't know that it. I mean, there's nothing stored outside. Occasionally, a heating oil tank when I've gone by, but not very often. So, so they want to create a grooming service and daycare for animals. So they're going to put up a sign 
they're changing the use from personal storage basically to a business. Yes. Isn't which there they will advertise. There, though? Isn't there an apartment? There's a business spot, you know. Yeah. Is it leased right now? Uh no. No residents. There's no lease. No. Nobody's living there now. Well, my brother in law he stayed there, but he's actually moving out. So he um, had no place to stay, so he didn't say right. that, yeah. But it, it kind could of, be to cooperate a living place. It could. It does actually. Okay. What what kind of um modifications are you talking about you know like for the dogs are you talking about a fenced area we're going to put up a, a 50 by 100 fence in the back field right right, right. Uh, it seems to me it's pretty clear it meets the definition of the non-residential use just like other dog care facilities have so they go through the pop, uh, application process mm -hmm. right okay yeah you will be going through the application process. I mean, there will be a lot of standards that won't be applicable to you because, you know, like high volume, more based on high volume traffic kinds of things, but, and because it's already constructed. Right. But, uh, well, that's an application. Um, if you run to the front window, it can get it to you. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Development. Yeah. It is available on our website as well. You want to print it off at home. Okay. The, the other thing I, I would just mention is that obviously Han's available to help you with that. And if you have questions, you're welcome to make it uh, get on our agenda and we'll we'll try to provide you with guidance as well. So they're closing this uh, yeah. okay. ah. <laughs> I want to take it home. Thank you so much. Thank Good you. Evening. You too. Okay, and uh, a similar situation would be correct. Uh, yes. So uh, we live at 18 and Betsy Lane, uh, just off of Knowles Road, where is it the very bottom of Belgrade Stream, where 135 crosses over Belgrade Stream? Uh, and I'm looking to uh, get an uh, authorization letter for a change of use to commercial. My interest is, my interest is to open up a bicycle repair shop uh, out of my home. So I'm uh, currently constructing a, a repair shop with the um, first part of the uh, garage, we have a garage of the shop on there that is now being converted into. Job. Um, we are more than two hundred feet, I believe, from from the water, as well as uh, in the the uh, snow or the dust. But I'm not being visible from the road. I wouldn't have any any signage up on any of the roads. The cover will be on my best route, which is a essentially a private road. But nothing on those. In the past, George, you talked about a business that developed on near your house that is now taking over the whole lot. And this is why I want these people to come in and run it by the board. Or, you know, it starts as a small business and orders come in and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And suddenly, you know, the commercial is bigger than the residential part of the lot. So, I hope that happens for you. <laughs> So I, I, I just want to make sure we cover all of our bases on the front end. Yeah. Um, so there's no construction going on other than what you already have. Right. Yeah. So basically, just finishing out the shop. It was. It was. Um, on the inside. When we purchased the home yeah. and finishing that out. Um, you know, there'll be some signs on the outside of the garage, and maybe something down where our driveway hits. When that be just to help people that are coming in. Uh, but I, I'm going to be mostly doing higher end mountain bikes. Uh, that's what we use in the area most. Um, I was a professional mechanic for a mapping cycling fitness that had two stores in the area that closed down the last two years. Um, and so there, there's a need, which is what I'm, why I'm trying to do this. Uh, I 
and not one to have things flow out of the house into the area. Yeah, well, that's how things kind of, you know, get away from people sometimes. And uh, it starts out neat enough and it doesn't look like a bit uh, non-residential use or commercial use. And then all, then it, six minutes later, it looks like that, or maybe even a junkyard. <laughs> um, let me read the uh, definition of home occupation for everybody's benefit because, um, um, well, I'll, I'll explain in a moment. Uh, an occupa uh, home occupation, uh, an occupation or profession which is carried on in a dwelling unit or accessory building, which a garage would be, which is clearly incidental and secondary to the residential use of the dwelling, carried on by a member of the family residing in the dwelling unit, includes no more than two outside employees not residing in the dwelling unit, and which does not alter the residential character of the neighborhood. It's the latter that oftentimes gets people, but um, or sometimes the number of employees is happened with right side. So, um, the um, um, I'm just curious how much you know uh, traffic do you think you're going to be getting? I mean, do you get like one or two people a day, or are you going to? I would not see it to be more than six people per day. Um, I'm not looking to make this a full time job. It would be, you know, three days a week like that. Um, and so I would not expect to be heavy traffic. I'm not going to have uh, a lot of the retail um, business, uh, retail products for sale. So there won't be people that are coming in just to look around and see if there's anything to purchase. So we also use people, people coming in to drop their bike off or take their bike off. And just to be clear, are you doing any retail of, of bikes themselves? Um, at this point, I'm not planning to. Um, I, if I do any retail at this point, it's going to be for just smaller items. Okay. Because if, if you went to retail, you'd clearly be outside the realm of a home occupation business. Okay. Um, and by the way, that's important because that's a, those are specifically exempt from this order of ordinance. I see. Uh, and so what... Does retail mean basically anything that somebody would purchase? I, I, I'm obviously going to have a service where uh, I'm repairing bikes, and a part of that is going to be new parts, parts, parts yeah, that right. kind yeah. of thing. Mm -hmm. And I would like to be able to have um, some general use things that people would be purchasing and using and needing to purchase available as well. Um, so I don't know like to what extent. It would be required to be retail. Does it mean anything that's on display and is purchasable? Uh, yeah, or I'm, of, kind of or right. I'm not, I'm, I, I would be more concerned personally if it was you're selling bicycles, you know, whole bicycles, mm -hmm. uh, rather than the occasional part that goes along with the repair service. Okay. Um, I mean, it, the, it, it, this is the dilemma that Belgrade's always in is that. Um, there's this ordinance applies to non-residential uses, okay, and but the way the ordinance is crafted, and, and it exempts home occupations, but there's a lot of space between a home occupation and something that triggers this ordinance, mm -hmm. and and um, and because uh, there are a lot of things in town that people portray as home occupations that are not home occupations, but they also don't trigger this ordinance. You know, they've got all kinds of junk outside of their, um, uh, from their business activity, um, but it's not a home, it's not a home occupation, but it also doesn't trigger the ordinance because it's not big enough. Um, Joe, uh, I have a question. This is the board here. Um, as a business, home occupation business grows and they increase the number of employees, but from two to the max to three. What? How does that transition occur? How? How do we find out about the transition? How does the code force on get involved? In the transition. You're going to move from small to a large to medium sized business. So, how is that handled you know, by the ordinance? Two ordinances we have. Well, it's the honor system. Okay. Like with anything else in this town, it, it it's you know that that the, the uh, business owner you know comes and asks, you know, do I need a permit for this? Uh, or it ends up being citizen complaints. Yeah. And we've okay. and we've had 
a, a you know big case, right side being one of them, number of cases that have gone that route. Um, and so um, so that that is the challenge, you're right about pointing that out. Yeah, and it's you have to say then the rest. Well, yeah, but that doesn't help them. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I got a question of the board. You're probably all aware of the, uh, I guess it's called the mower shop down there. The what shop? Mower shop on 130. Yeah. Before you get out of town and the Manchester. Do you consider that, or uh, would you consider that a home occupation? I would, no. I'm, I'm thinking of the idea is in the showing zone, I'm almost sure the definition says something where they have outside storage or whatever, but I know that the, our definition of home occupation doesn't say anything about stuff being outside. Yeah. Um, and I kind of agree with Craig that, you know, that it's kind of a guy does his operation in the shop. You don't really know what he's there other than he's got some lawnmowers and whatever outside. Um, Some people have more junk lawnmowers when they're at their homes. <laughs> yeah. Like anyway, it, it was just, I'm, I'm seeing this, you know, I don't want to talk about lawnmowers, but there's a, you know, if, if you had five people uh, with uh, bikes to do work on uh, and three of them are sitting outside, uh, you know, I don't think I would say that that in itself would say, oh, you're not a home occupation. I, I, I tend to agree with Rich that uh, this doesn't feel like that. No, I, I mean, you could potentially evolve, you know, if, if your business really takes off or whatever, you know. It takes off and help move you out of the house. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my, my shot space right now is 12 feet by 27 feet. Um, it's not really enough space to to have a fleet of bikes available for people. And it, I just don't have enough space to make it into a full bike shop, and I'm not interested in doing that. Yeah. Um, and that same goes with hiring more employees. Like I, I'm not interested in, yeah. in expanding and having two mechanics. And I mean, at the other at the one end, you know, if it was like Matthews or or something, you know, obviously that would. Fall under this ordinance, like somebody proposing something of that. Yeah, that would that be a no brainer? That's yeah. not what and you're talking. I'm about. not interested in that. Um, yeah, I'm just interested in mostly just doing the, the repair portion of it. What about electric bikes? The electric mountain bikes, would you working on those? Or? Uh, that that's an interesting one. Um, so when I was at Matthews. There was a period of time where we were bringing in electric bikes. They're becoming much more popular, and yeah. um, and eventually it was it was clear from uh, hearing what other bike shops were dealing with that they were dangerous to have on the premises. Uh, batteries were usually quite cheap, but they were expensive ones, and so we would say, "I can work on the channel portion of the bike, but you have to take the battery home with you." I'm not interested in that. That's um, that was my concern. You start working on the electric bikes and now you're dealing with batteries. You're just going to be doing all non motor bikes, mountain bikes, like you said. Right. Exactly. The electric is where it gets, you know, great. I, I do not want to do electric. Uh, it's, yeah. Fair the other part of this that may be helpful at risk of announcing more expensive items at our home. Um, we're talking about high-end mountain bikes, uh, thousands of dollars individual bikes, right? Those would not be left outside. Okay. Yeah. Right. So um we're talking about, you know, we're not talking about camp bikes. We're not talking where they if owners found out that they're very expensive bikes were being left outside, that would be a pretty pretty, pretty much problem. Um, and so the context of what type of bike we're talking about means that they will absolutely all um, stay yeah. inside. Um and so that's, I think, an important piece to sort of remember in, in the context of the type of bikes that we would be working with. Yeah, but I've learned a story where you have thought of the two day garage for storage for bikes. I think that's a question you say expensive bikes, but expensive. <laughs> um, with the range. I mean, it, we started like 2000, you go up to 10,000. Oh. 
Yeah. So then, then we are in agreement that this is a home. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. That's what I said. Yeah, I'm just thinking as you may change your plan to this plan date and you want to grow, then you on the honor system and come and talk to Holy Book and all this. Yes, there. Okay. Once again, you and I have plans of making this into a full time at all. That's written, that's written in uh, marriage blood over here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And for the record, what were your names again? Uh, Jonathan Bourne. J-O-N-E-T-H-A-N-D-O-U-R-N-E. And my name's Anna, A-N-N-A. Last name is Peach. He is a mentor, E-A-C-H. Just like Peach. Thank you. So, does, so just because I'm unclear about the names and titles of various different things, um, we would not then need to proceed with submitting any paperwork to the board then? Is that what I'm hearing? Okay. Just in the cogs, right? Isn't there a home occupancy thing? Yeah, what would be? You, well, not to the planning board, but I, I don't know. Is there anything required no. at your end? No. I, I don't need to change the use then? No. no. Okay. Okay. Just don't live there. It's right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, thank you. Sorry to bring you down so late. Oh, yeah, no but problem. I just didn't want to answer. Yeah. You know, on the authority of the board. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So, Jordan and Celine Rickard, right? Yeah. Uh, they're going to be our next week's case. They came tonight to observe and see what kind of questions that they were going to encounter. So they're looking to. Um, Basically, demolish their existing camp and build a year round residence further back, as far back as practical. They've got some CMP restrictions. So, what do you think? What did you see tonight that was interesting? Um, very informative. Um, having a Having served on the board, planning board for 13 or 14 years, I think it was, the uh, folks that are uh, very professional. Thank you. And uh, I think uh, we're, we're, long story short, we're, uh, as you see, we're retirement age. Uh, I'm probably one of the next five years will be. At least with a walker or a wheelchair, and I need a, a single floor home. And our home in Scalpegan is five bedrooms with all the bedrooms upstairs, which is as of tonight, I believe, for sale. Um, we we need a retirement home, and when <clears throat> it's it's going to be a tough situation because of our situation with uh, the line that. Feed Spalding Point goes right through our property, and um, we tr we tried to talk to CMP about moving the line to give us more room, just more setback, and they ran uh, basically the numbers by us that just made my eyes spin. And they're the least expensive because you've got power, you got the power, but we also got. Telephone lines and cable lines to move to. And the pole that feeds our camp feeds two other camps, and there are septic systems all along that right away. So we have to be 15 feet from that power line. We can't get closer than that. So that has really put the kibosh and made us work very hard to try to make something work. Uh, we're not going to be 75 feet. We, we started out to be 75 feet. We have a small lot to begin with. It's only 50 by two, two over 200. Um, and it's just not possible to put the septic system in and the power line and a house and keep it back, you know, 75 feet. So that's our dilemma. We're hoping we can work with you somehow rather than make it with them. Because we, well, this is a family camp. It's been in the family 
for about 40 years. And we've, we've been 70 years. Okay. Um, and this is one of the original fishing camps that was there, the vertical log side and cabin. That you can throw a cat out through most anywhere. Um, but it's, it's been our summer home for the last 20 years. And we love it. And salmon is a great, my neighbor is a great, salmon is a great place to be. And we'd like to retire here. So we're hoping we can work with you to, to make this work. Question. Where's all these points? The boat landing. You know what the boat landing, landing is? Uh, uh, what, what lake are you in? Sand. Okay. By the dam. You, you, go down you know what Chupi Lumber is? The walls? Yes. You know where the dam is before right. you get there? Well, the road before that is falling for them. Okay. Right, that and you got the boat landing there. there. Correct. And you go beyond the boat landing? With the fifth place on the left after the boat landing. After the boat landing. Okay. Yes. I've never been out that far. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm landing. Okay. I have got an idea what that. Right. As you saw it tonight, I mean, it, it, your situation is not unique. Um, We've handled a fair number just this year, actually, uh, where the, since you've been on a plane board, you probably know about the concept under shoreline zoning of whether something, to what extent something can be moved back to the greatest practical extent. And so that's what we'll be looking at. And, and certainly the power lines is a very common restriction. Um, the, uh, um, don't be surprised, you know, as you plan this, um, that uh, we may need, uh, Two meetings and a site visit to you know uh, consider your application fully, but um, but you know we're definitely as you've hopefully seen tonight willing to work with you. I appreciate that. I I drop the applications off with uh, I think all the information that I know that you need. There's probably some things that I did not get in there. I tried to give you everything uh, that you need. Uh, if, and I'm sure the things that you will, other than that, but I tried to fill all the packets full of pretty much the information that you need. We have uh, the survey, I, I have a survey map of the four, and we made up a survey basically using the survey maps as what's going to be what we're proposing to be the after. There are some things that are not cast in stone, the actual house plan of the size with we have both agree on but other things in the house you know have not been determined and one of the questions that well one of the things that changes if we're if we can't beat the 75 if we hope to make the 20 foot mark you know it's, we certainly will try to meet that 20 foot mark but uh, yeah I have a question you mentioned the 20 foot mark okay yeah so you already picked up on that or know about, you know, yes. the, that as was in the case in this application before us today, uh, that was an issue. And then the other that really didn't uh, get spoken of directly, uh, but at our prior meeting was is that um, they were actually originally proposing an expansion within 25 feet and our ordinance prohibits that as does the state model ordinance. We're gonna we're gonna be we're gonna be I I I have a number right in front of me it's basically about 50, uh -huh. 54, 55 feet back from the water. Uh -huh. The present camp is fifteen feet from the water, right on the land. So you can fish from it. <laughs> I can go online and go and and uh, we the the, the Present plan, we are over, we'll tell you from the present plan is over on number of square feet. But that's the issue with these things. I need, I rarely have to have a garage. I need to be able to drive in and get out of the car and get into the house without going upstairs and, and look down to the snow because I'm at some point I'm not going to be able to. So I'm, I, I understand that doesn't make any difference and I, but the, a lot of the things that we, we have to plan around this house is, um, you know, my handicapped disability issues. And 
that's one reason. So there's also we have designed a deck on the front so I can at least get out and look at the lake if I need to. So that's that's kind of our story, and uh, I'm hoping that we can come to some conclusion somewhere else. Um, and your feedback uh, will be much appreciated. So you, you submitted an application to Hans already. I received it today, so they will be on our next meeting. Okay. Well, I appreciate your time, folks. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. you want to schedule a site visit? Or... Yeah. yeah, let's take a look at the application yeah. first. It's, who knows? Maybe we don't even have to. Yeah. Uh, the, the one thing uh, I would like to update the pictures that, 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 that we've taken. I like coffee. I didn't have coffee at all. And I'll try to update those and well, make a better picture of the actual camp we did now because they're, they're terrible. Good pictures are always helpful to us. You can email them to me as well. That way I can print them off fresh. Yeah. You don't have to go through that pixelation. Oh, perfect. Did we have your email address? Some card, CEO, yeah. okay. CEO, and okay. Thank you for coming out. Thank you all. Yeah, thank thank you. you. Good evening. Guess we'll be seeing you then. Yeah, I, so. I hope so. <laughs> so, uh, next item in the agenda will be um, moving previous pants. Thank you much. Quite welcome. And I do too. So, uh, next uh, item in agenda will be approval of, yes. of yeah. previous minutes, yeah. August 3rd and August 24th. Skip, skip over the grandfathering discussion. I thought that was. No. Right. Never mind. So, we'll look back there then. All businesses got grandfather and business use. Well, I think that's what you want to Yeah, we did we discuss the accessory dwellings. I thought at first all these folks were here to discuss it. That's yeah, but you have to be fully input from, from them to the accessory dwelling. So so I'll go back to that again. So um are we gonna uh, do further discussion on the accessory dwelling units? As I was talking to, can I ask uh, panel lawyers what direction we had to go into that? So we left it at that. Yeah. I don't think that had been done yet. So in the packet, um, I had uh, written up some possible questions um, and um, and tried to um, facilitate our discussion today so that we can um, Move ahead to coming up with some final questions that we could uh, then write up in uh, a letter or email to uh, the town attorney and for the accessory or well, for the grandfather? No, for the grandfather. Okay, so I thought we were talking about the accessory or two. Who's on first? What's <laughs> on second, right? I I am I'm sorry, I apologize to the public. I was thrown off because uh, it, it kind of uh, having the discussion with this uh, three different uh, uh, questions that we have from the public, they were not related to the uh, accessory to so, okay. so now we are we're going in, again, we are going to the accessory joining unit uh, discussion. And so we're going to tackle that first from a new notes then. Is what I'm hearing. Okay. So the last meeting we discussed a lot about it. We were here yeah. quite late. Yeah. And um, I thought we left it at we were going to take directions from the town attorney on what direction we were going to go. So there's, I mean, do you have any new information or something you want to bring up, or is it just rehashing what we rehashed last week? I, mean, I, I had a question. What did we kind of talk about last week? I kind of forget. Uh, what do we come? What are we kind of going to go into the general discussion? I think <laughs> about accessory dwelling units and yeah. affordable housing. Well, okay, all right. So, so Sarah had 
the meeting before that, some of us had volunteered, Sarah and myself, I can't remember who else, to, to summarize key documents that were um, uh, yeah, yeah. related to this subject in terms of what we had to do to comply with state law right. by next um, July. And one of them, uh, Sarah, you uh, summarized a document. It was a guidance document that Bonds had provided. Uh, I summarized, uh, did a summary in writing um, of the uh, Department of Economic and Community Development's regulations that implement that state law. Because as you know, if you've worked at, as you have Pete in state government, the legislature approves legislation, but it rarely has enough detail to be implemented as written. So state agencies have to write rules to, so that they are actually can be implemented and people can understand what's required of them. Um, the, uh, and then Mr. Baker was in right. charge of checking the- uh, yeah, Right. Family. Yeah, right. So that was the scope of that discussion. And at least in how I remember leaving it was that we're sort of waiting for the, the uh, Kennebec Valley Council of Governments to get back to us uh, on when they're when they get uh, once they've received their grant from the state to be assisting uh, towns like Belgrade. Uh, you may recall Solon is in the queue ahead of us uh, than us uh, for their technical assistance. Um, so we're taking kind of wait and see type of position at this particular point. Uh, yeah. I, I, Oh, are you kind of talk about what, 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 are we going to talk? How, how are they going to get involved at this particular point? Do they know we got any direction from them yet? No, they had estimated uh, that it would be late September before they got any money from the state. And Oh, the selectmen. Um, yeah. Oh, the selectmen. I'm sorry. I thought you meant Katie Cog. Sorry. No, the so we're, uh, I guess my the question getting around to the selectmen want to have to get into this particular subject matter, or no. not? They, they know about it. Huh? They know about it, right. and they, and the town managers briefed them on multiple occasions. Okay. Um. The uh and um and the presumption has been been that we will make it, well. You may recall our original recommendation to the town manager and the select board is that we would. Uh, look into this and make recommendations to them on how to proceed to uh, keep the town in compliance with that state law and what ordinance changes might be necessary to accomplish that. All right, and what's the timeline on this again? Uh, well, the deadline is next July. Next July. So it's it, it, it sounds like a lot of time, but it's not. Right. Because obviously any ordinance changes would have to go to the voters. So... But Greg, you're saying we're going to do uh, wait for some some sure, call. 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 Yeah. No, So the thing is, for us yet, is it? Yeah, I, I mean, the only thing I can think of it, us doing uh, at the moment is maybe getting in touch with KB Cog and seeing if their timelines change at all. Uh, I mean, they're depend, you know, they're. <laughs> We're sort of the tail of the dog, and and and, and the head is the uh, Department of Economic and Community Development, and whether or not they can get the grant monies out, um, and all that kind of stuff. Did we get a new legislation uh, in twenty twenty four, and they will return this? Will our work be in um, in vain. Yeah, in vain. Should we uh, uh, wait and see attitude or? Well, um, I don't know how much you know of the legislative history of this. And oh, I, I believe me. Oh, you do. Okay, so you know it's already been to the legislature twice. Um, and I know that um, the governor set up a committee to do this before this legislature even convened. Uh, the previous legislature. And they didn't even bring up the bill until the end of the session. LD 2003 tells you all you need to know. And they just rammed it through, taking the recommendation of the then Speaker of the House, who was chair of the committee, and um, didn't leave it up 
too much discussion. They just have to have to well, are you sure? people disagreed with it. I testified for Belgrade against it. And so the chairman came in and made all these um, recommendations to all of our complaints, which made it even worse. And it's it's a horrible law, in my estimation. And I think that we could overturn it. Yeah, so, so I, I can't speak to any of that. Uh, in terms of the history, I, I only meant in terms of the fact that the legislature took it up again this past session, and I don't know all the changes that came of it, but the one that affects us most directly is the change in the deadline. They essentially gave us another 12 months, which um, in the bigger scheme of things is not much because uh, it, it it would work fine for a town that has a council form of government, but for a town that has a town meeting form of government, it doesn't work nearly as well. Right. And I have, from what I've read in here, it applies mostly to towns that uh, supply water and sewer, which we don't. So yeah. Are we exempt from a lot of this? Some of it. Um, you know, it would be good um, if we provided uh, you with uh, the summary I did of the rules, because there's three major components. And one, in my personal opinion, doesn't apply to Belgrade at all. It applies to more urban areas, like where they have uh, public sewer and water. Yes. Uh, and then there are two of the two remaining sections. Uh, one, that has to do with accessory dwelling units definitely applies to us. And the other, it applies to us, but it may not mean we need to make any changes. We, we have to look into it a little further because it has to do with like duplexes and things of that nature, which um, Belgrade allows now. And um, some might require approval under the multifamily dwelling unit ordinance or that dates back to the 1970s, but, um, the uh, in, all that stuff is kind of up for play at this point uh, in terms of whether we want to recommend any changes to the select board. I think I have. Uh, um, let me check. Um, Mr. Chairman, I my concern when I first heard this bill was I'm looking at the field of my kitchen window, and if they, if the state deems that um, buildable for. Uh, or a family dwelling, they could take it and we would have no say. Is, is there any validity to that here? That, I think we could get, you know what? That could happen now. <laughs> I think. <laughs> There's not take it, but you know, it could be developed for that kind of a use. Yeah, yeah. Not without a permit. That type of development could occur, but. Why would the state do it here? There's no jobs. If they put people in there, where are they going to work? They have to have farms. Well, the state, the state's they not going to be developing any of this. Private well, investors and developers are exactly. And no, almost that, the state. state because they're allowing all these illegal immigrants that they're calling asylum seekers into the state. Um, they're putting our people out on the street and our veterans and housing those people and crying for more. Any and concern with they're going to be taking over private process to live in um, public housing. Yeah. I, um, but, but, but public housing, what's going on here now? That Penny's concern. Pardon? That is Penny's concern about the empty fields she sees. She doesn't want the state to come decide they're going to build a public housing unit. But right. so that, that so that can happen under this particular LD? No. Is it? Yeah. Well, we say no, we say yes. Well, it, it, it could happen now, but not the state's not going to be the developer. Well, the, the, those low income housing, like in Portland and Auburn, Lewiston, and all those places in Bangor where it happens now is usually private investors with a state subsidy, but the state and the developer, the state oh, I doesn't. That, but this is yeah, I know, it will, but that's not what we were talking about. Right yeah, and the state doesn't take it by eminent domain, for right. example. Oh, they, they, they don't, but they then they allow the regulation to happen. You know, it can, it can happen. So the state is, is giving approval. And they're giving financial incentives to do it. Okay. 
So that, that's, that's all in the particular uh, LD? Yes. Have you got this? I've heard that. You've had it. I know. I had it. I read every page. The, the, the important point, though, so is that um, to qualify for the kinds of exemptions from local land use ordinances for these larger low income housing projects, you have, the town has to have public sewer and public water. We don't have that. So they can't, they they would not be, they would have to comply with okay, all, so all our existing land use standards. Okay, all right. That's so that's the part of the law that doesn't, or I should say the regulations that to implement the law that don't apply to Bellevue. Okay, and there's two other, and then the three things you're getting into, you mentioned, you know, you got into the second one, then what's the third one? I think we're going to two, right? There, there's a total of three. One's the accessory dwelling units, and then the others, I can't remember how they State listed. Statewide housing production laws, municipal rural and fair housing, short-term rentals, affordable housing density and growth area bonus, and two to four units. Yeah, that. that, that one? Yeah, that's what could potentially apply to us. Is that plus the housing? Um, it could be. I mean, we allow cluster housing, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's low income housing. Okay. Uh, that, that's that's allowed under the subdivision ordinance. And and low income housing. Um, what are we inviting? Trenches. Well, I, you know, the, the Hans made a good point. You know, um, the. Uh, I mean, in one sense, you could say the apartments in town are already low income housing, but the um, but by and large, there's not a lot of incentive to develop here in Belgrade because we're not, you know, we don't even have a major grocery store. I mean, th there aren't the services here that um, people that have uh, may not have vehicles or are unable to drive. I, I mean, it, it just you know would be. Um, unsustainable and and so i my personal feeling is from just what i've looked at so far and i you know there's more to be learned here and we'll learn more from katie cog that's why we're, we've approached them for technical assistance on this is i think it'll, for us it's primarily going to be about accessory dwelling units and i don't think there's going to be that many of those anyway because they really don't they certainly don't many of those are going to be grandma grandpa houses places for caregivers um um, maybe some for rentals, you know, but um, I don't, I don't think we're going to see some big boom of low income housing in Belgrade, um, partly because land prices are so expensive here. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's very uh, sure. economically viable. I mean, it basically is saying the developers aren't going to uh, are going to look at other towns. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. and they're going to go to town, the, the larger towns that have like housing authorities, okay. you know, like Lewiston, again, Lewiston, Auburn, Bangor, Portland. So this line, this public order so. um, tells a lot of the towns that are doing this. I think it's a I've got one. Yeah, and this one that lists. Oh, yeah. We, we discussed that at our prior meeting. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah. Um, that's right. Yeah. So, that, how does Belgrade fund? Well, Belgrade is the yeah. My point is that it is municipalities that do provide water and sewer. Right. So, I mean, so some of the wealthier suburban towns and the Portland suburbs are probably going to be impacted a heck of a lot more by this than we are. You know, Scarborough, for example, yeah. where yeah. All right, so we're waiting for direction on KV Cog. That's right. And KV Cog will probably meet with us as they did when we were developing a commercial. I, so. I would, yeah, I think yeah, they'll, that's why we're looking. Yeah, I, I think we'll, what I'm hoping is that they'll look at like say our minimum lot size ordinance mm -hmm. and say these are some of the things that we think you may need to change and and why and then we discuss it okay 
So now we can just kind of table that until we meet with KV Cog and we can move on. Yeah. But I have a question. We wait for KV Cog. We have nothing drafted ready to go. Well, we don't know what to draft. Yeah. I wouldn't feel comfortable moving forward okay. until we get the technical assistance we need. I'd like to finish my scenario if you don't mind. We missed the town meeting. Nothing gets voted on. July 1, this happens. There's no rules. So our minimum lot size ordinance is basically useless. Do we want to be in that position? Well, yeah, I, I missed what you said. I'm glad that I didn't appeal. If we do nothing and the deadline passes and we do not have an accommodation, people can build whatever they want. Our minimum lot size ordinance will be useless. But we don't want to let that happen because I I did the numbers and we need all six months from the moment we put it all in to the moment it gets voted. So so we we talk about getting all this wrapped up by the end of September, beginning of October to vote in March. And if we don't vote in March, we can vote in June. And so then what still, September? This September? This, this September. This the, month. The, the end of this month, beginning of the next. Well, Kevin Club should be alive coming up the end of the September. That's what they told us. Yeah. So if let's say we miss that window, we still have to be in November, December, because we can get the vote done in July. In July. Yeah. So we just we need six months is that it's a process if the window is six months from the moment we we as a board wrap it up and give it to the select people. So Hans, um, I, I understand where you're coming from, uh, and I'm not suggesting we do nothing. I'm, I'm suggesting that we just wait and and go with the process we come up with, including uh, obtaining a technical assistance from people that know a whole lot more about this than we do. Um, but you know, let's let's just play this scenario out. That, uh, you know, sort of the worst case scenario. Let's say we're, we make our best you know, good faith effort comply with the state statute and because of um, uh, whatever problems we might happen to run into where the task is bigger than we thought uh, we're not able to um, develop whatever draft ordinance uh, amendments are needed to go to town meeting either in March or at a special meeting in June and we missed the deadline well you know, one thing I can, and Rich probably can confirm this, you know, after spending a career in state government is um, that agency is not going to go after us um, because we uh, because we failed to meet that deadline. But if we've made a good faith effort, they're going to go after the towns that made no effort at all. Mm -hmm. And um, and uh, I'm not real concerned about it as long as we've made a concerted Good faith effort, and either have something in the works or close to a, a completion by that deadline. Um, the uh, they, they've just got they're going to have bigger fish to fry than the little town of Belgrade. There's going to be a lot more if we don't make the deadline and we show any kind of effort to do so. And guarantee there'll be five times or well, a whole bunch of towns that have done nothing. Well, and the proof of that is when we did the uh, had the uh, 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 online uh, Zoom meeting conference with with Katie Cog, the only other town officials on that were from the town of Solon. You know, there weren't a, there were not, not all the other you know all these other towns in Kennebec County. They were they weren't on it. I mean, admittedly, the big ones, Waterville, Winslow, the ones with, they're in a you know special category, and 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 Katie Cog probably can't even help them. Um, but you know, China, you know, where are all these other towns? They they probably just barely started to talk about it, you know. So is my understanding that after we meet with Katie Cobb, if anyone knows what questions we we need to ask our lawyer and we'll meet with a lawyer? Yes. Uh, yeah. Um I will say that now after talking to Katie Cobb, we probably will be able to uh, put a draft. Okay, and then from there. Have that blessed by the lawyer. Right. And 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 there may be legal questions that come up that KD Cog can't answer, and we will have to get legal advice on those as well. But um I mean, first off, it's it, as Craig said, you know, we're kind of counting on them to help kind of figure out what the scope of this task is that we've been given. Mm -hmm. 
you think that all the other towns know about it? I mean, the, the state must have contacted these um, town managers or somebody. Yeah, I, my sense is there's been a lot of publicity about it. Um, uh, and as you probably know, since you were involved in it, uh, you know, organizations like MMA had, um, you know, opposed it. And then uh, when it was passed, uh, they've been putting out um, um, information with um, mailings to uh, town select boards. So if they don't know about it, it's because it's sitting in their inbox. Yeah, I can't imagine that BETV would have done a mass mailing at some point uh, it's informing towns what has just been. Yeah. Happened. Maybe not. But I don't. I, I that I don't know. You would think so. I've researched all the information I got. Nobody sent me a thing. Oh boy. <laughs> Interesting. So the set of rules you got the nineteen dash one hundred chapter five. Yeah. That's because I dug for it. Interesting. So. So I know at least that the the town of Sharon is aware of this whole thing because before even. I got the first email that I forward to you about it. The, the this person from the had already told me about this whole thing, and I said, "Oh, I don't think that's going to apply to us." I said, yeah, 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 it's going to apply to us. You really, really. <laughs> you know. Anyways, so the only thing I have to add to the discussion of the LD two thousand and three is that between our last meeting where we when this the and today, uh, we got different complaints in town about um, uh, rental properties, specifically Airbnbs, that had that that had a, a mini town in there, meaning that they were rented and it, probably the, the occupancy should have been two cars with maybe six, seven people, and they have. Like 20 or 30 people, no partying on a one day because everybody's allowed to have their parties. But it was a whole week of it. So I had, I was, <laughs> I was targeted for different directions, different people about asking about if if um, there was an ordinance about noise in the town. We don't have a noise ordinance. Uh, if something like that happens, if someone overnight disturbance. The only recourse that we have is to call the state police about it. Mm -hmm. sure. uh, and then um, uh, uh, all the residents were concerned about the fact that, well, this is this is starting to come to this town. Let's say instead of two incidents in a two weeks period or three weeks period or a month, instead of two, next summer we're going to have four incidents in that same amount of time. And then we're going to have people in in Airbnbs being used the whole summer long, every other week, 20 people in these places that cannot really, that not really designed for that capacity. Because when they rent this out, the owner is not even local. Uh, all this happened through internet. And they say, oh, sure, it's going to be OEA people. But they come here and they end up bringing twice, three times the amount of people. So the the concept of the uh, we discussed this a little bit that not even people have a direction in it. How this additional housing and this all the, these additional people are going to stress the the uh, quality of the drinking water here and the quality of the lakes as well. So um, um, you know. Um, that question of the mean max number of occupants with this thing is going to become uh, a big, big question. And now I know that we discussed well, how I'm going to, how Hans is going to enforce that what, two people per bedroom. Well, we don't have to do anything. Hans doesn't have to do anything. People are going to be calling about it. Hey, listen, next door neighbor, all of a sudden, instead of two, two cars, that a seven cars in the, in the yard all week, all week long, and it has uh, also about 20 people every day. So that that's, that will be the only way hands will be calling to enforce it. That. 
uh, he, we don't have to be policing it. Neighbors are going to be policing it. Uh, residents are going to be policing it. So it's people. Well, we have nothing to enforce. Well, not now. That's exactly what I'm pointing out. That question that we you remember, you give us all these uh, ten questions here about uh, the occupancy. The owner have to be there. The uh, um, that's a totally different ordinance. You have to come up with a short term rental ordinance. That will be different one then. The landlords to keep up the renting the property should be responsible for governing their property. Okay. And a lot of towns, Rangeley's one recently that's put forth the ordinance for short term rentals, and the voters just said no because they're making money. The voters are making money well, renting their properties. Good luck. Well, all we can do is, I guess, our uh, hands then, uh, if we have to come up with that ordinance and put it together, we should not be, I don't think we'll be a lot of work. Put it together because there's this weight of the uh, of the community, you know, looking into this, and if the vote put it down, if the town put it, put it down, say, so, well, listen, we beat our due diligence, we put the ordinance in for the town, and they say they don't they don't care about it. So we can all we can do. So um I'm not sure if if this is something is a mandate or a a um uh request that have to come from the select board. I'm not sure about that. I we cannot do anything till the pile of uh, complaints come about and the so that board said, oh, this is too much. Let's have that audience that you're talking about. Now. But it has to be, everything has to come in course. They're just, I guess, giving a, a preamble of what some of the residents concerned uh, were picturing that would happen. I think this is a topic for another day. Yeah. Uh, it yeah. And it's still it's way deeper because if you start putting people out of the house and it's too many and they've been drinking, well, now you're creating a hazard for the rest of the public. Someone gets hurt, the town gets sued. I mean, it's, it's an ugly circle. It's one of those things. Like, I'm not interested in the rental thing right at the moment. I don't want to say. Yeah, yeah um, I think that's a subject for another time. Yeah. yeah. We're off subject. We're off subject. We need to get started. All right. So uh, going back to the agenda here. So uh, that's all the input that we have. I thought that somehow that item that I will just spoke about could be added into um, uh, the question that we had about how many occupants per bedroom. That was my thought into it. I mean, I think that's a, a, something we need to discuss and, and discuss with KB Cog okay. um, and as well as amongst ourselves. But I think we need to separate that from any nuisances created by it. It doesn't have to be just, you know, from these kinds of housing units. But, you know, my neighbors had, you know, uh, my two neighbors have been going at it over noise from parties for years. And, and you know, periodically the sheriff's uh, comes and tells them to turn their music down. It, it, you know, I mean, it, deal with the nuisance, you know, but that's not the subject we're on now. Okay. Sounds good. So uh, any other comments about LD 2003? Do you want, uh, do you think we should contact KB Cog and just check in with them and see where they're at? I think we should do that. I can do send them an email. That'd be sweet. We have a training of this. Um, I'm not, well, I hope we don't meet with KB called the same night or day. What day is your training? You want to ask me that? <laughs> you, you, want, you want to send that, that in an email to uh, Mr. Seals? So uh, well, I think, you know, whenever. I think this will be like anything else. They'll also suggest some dates and, and more than likely it's going to be at one of our regular meetings because you know not not everybody has flexibility as flex as flexible as I am because I'm retired. So um you know so okay. we'll have 
I think there'll be a number of limitations that way. So you won't be unique. Yeah, a question. Penny, you said you, 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 you had getting involved in meeting the guy in the subject matter. What are you doing? Or, what, what are you doing? I'm just an alternate on the plan. I know, but you find on. Why would you get involved with this in the first place? I guess, what do you, what can you do? You know, the 2003. I don't know. Does this tie into 2000? What we're talking about? Yeah. The party? yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. I, I joined the planning board because of time. I just realized that um, you were doing working on 2003. Right. And it's been a main concern of mine. Okay. Um, so, how does this partying thing that you're talking about no, get into the uh, party thing? Uh, uh, came in and did okay. uh, they work. Uh, being in conflict uh, <laughs> of seeing, seeing what uh, if, if we can we can have in an ordinance a restriction on the number of people per room. Per room. Per room, yeah. Okay, that came from the public. That came from the public. And then right. I tied it on to that, this new ordinance, that some of the questions that we have to answer is that. Uh, in putting that ordinance together. Okay, so they that's only for accessory dwelling units. Okay. It'll be 2003. That's right. They're tying it in with that. Yes, okay. I was I was tying that in with you it. But Mr. Seal just correct me that is in the hands. Right. Correct me that that what I am talking about will not be able to get into this ordinance. That it will be completely in ordinance. Okay. All right. And then also I I I uh, Indicated that in order for that to be triggered, it has to come from the select board. Yes. All right. Then Penny mentioned that. Uh, uh, There's a special yeah. training from 2009. But she's doing training. Are you yeah. not doing training on 2003? No, no, I'm doing training. They were the Oh, yeah. Oh, the training that we all had to take. Yeah. They recently took it. Oh, a lot to learn. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, you had an Augusta. I versus. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Sorry, I just needed clarification. That's okay. Okay. Sorry for that. Right. Full story. When I had to take it, Becky was the, the trainer. Oh. <laughs> That's helpful. <laughs> well, I thought it was a little awkward, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you can ask her questions when you're home. Well, that's true. So I guess we're done with LD 2003. Yep. Yeah. Next order of business is grandfathering business uses. Is that something that Hans wants to talk about? No, go to the letter. So just in the way of background for all our say, uh, benefit. Um, at the last meeting, um, Hans had posed a question to us about this, and um, and <clears throat> we had a somewhat lengthy discussion about it, and decided that before we moved on to talking about the substance, we really needed to find out what sort of the legal framework was, what if anything, we could even uh, deal with uh, on this uh, subject matter since the town doesn't have town-wide zoning. And um, and so I just took it upon myself to try to uh, lay out what I thought were some of the issues. Um, again, this applies to the Commercial Development Review Ordinance. Um, and uh, on specific question was, or, or his suggestion uh, as an amendment was any business that has been active for three years must appear for review prior to uh, reopening. And that evolved into a discussion about grandfathered, so-called grandfathered uh, uh, businesses uh, and other non-residential uses. Grandfathering, at least my interpretation of what it means is those that were constructed, established and operating prior to 2001 when this when that ordinance was adopted by the voters. Um, I included in the way of a preface um, some of the existing requirements of the ordinance, just as a reminder that if somebody expands a, um, a uh, so-called grandfathered, uh, lawyers don't like the term grandfathered for some reason, I don't know why, um, the uh, expansion uh, 
it, it's possible that they'll trigger the ordinance that way, even though the, the original business. The other was if they in, uh, undertake a change of use as is defined by the ordinance. So that was the other thing. So there are situations where those where those um, businesses or, you know, it might even be an institutional use of some sort, um, gravel pit, whatever it might happen to be, um, could trigger the ordinance um, if they either expand uh, to a certain uh, degree or if they change their use so that, say, uh, um, something goes from a bike shop to a uh, retail or restaurant, you know, something that's high traffic. So that was just a way of background. And so I just took a shot at, based on our discussion, putting together some possible questions to ask the attorney, which is what's on page one and, and, and uh, I'm, I'm sorry, on page two of, the, uh, of um, my memo. Uh, and since I, I went back, as I was preparing for tonight's meeting, I, I went back to, uh, Hans' original uh, suggestion and, and, and question to us, basically, and realized there, there probably is a sixth question that needs to be asked, and it's very similar to number five. Number five asked uh, if, if um, the town wished uh, to amend the ordinance to define a time period for disuse of a pre-existing land use, pre-existing land use being uh, legal speak for uh, grandfather use. Um, uh, when would it be considered discontinued? Well, the same question applies, uh, and, and this is more in line with Hans' original uh, question to us uh, about something that was approved under the ordinance. And we've had a number of these around town. I mean, you, uh, 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 approved under the ordinance, and for whatever reason, the, the business goes belly up, or it's just abandoned, or it just never happens. Um, when, at what point is that, I mean, if it's never constructed, that's one thing that's pretty clear under the ordinance, but if, if it was constructed and then went out, uh, went out of business or out of disuse or went into disuse, um, can a town like ours, uh, add a provision that if it's been, you know, for three years, as Hans said, out of, out of use or out of operation, uh, it, can it be considered null and void basically? And if anything else was reestablished that, that in the future would it have be required to come back to the ordinance? So I think that's a, a, a sixth question that probably should be asked of the attorney because I don't know what the answer is. I really struggle with something like that because now you're taking away the value of properties from people. And, you know, people buy these investment properties and just because they're not being used at the moment doesn't mean we have the right to take their investment away and devalue the property where they have to come back in and possibly get a permit or maybe get shot down so they can't even do it um take for instance um down on 27 um that little hotel on the side there i mean all they need is some sort of septic but they haven't chosen to do it but if they bought that as an investment property and if they come back and we have reasons why they can't do it then we just took a ton of money away from them for no reason. And I have a real problem with taking value away from properties that people buy. People have rights with their property. You know, we're, we're sitting here trying to make all these rules. And this is me being nice. And all these rules, but it's all just taking stuff away from the people that have had these properties and just taking it away, just taking it away. That's all we're doing. We're constantly taking away, taking away making another rule for this, making another rule for that. And I'm getting pretty tired of it myself. And, you know, taking value from people's properties isn't what we're here to do. And, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be on board with it, just so you know. So, you know. I mean, last, last meeting, you were very much in favor of uh, seeking advice from the town attorney to, and seeking advice, it? no. Seek advice, but I'm not going to be, you know, to put a time limit on grandfathering. People buy this, so they don't do it in five years. Big deal. It's still an investment property. And now we're saying, well, it took too long on your investment. 
<laughs> I understand your point. It's a good point. And uh, do we want to go down that rabbit hole and discuss it and and, and get an attorney's uh, input, you know, a particular attorney's input? Or you know, do we want to test this process? Uh, I don't know. I, I'm going to go back to where the select is sitting on this. I understand the issue of thinking of Craig, but at the same time, if somebody got a permit, came to us and got a permit, and met the standards for what they're proposing, and then somebody else wants to come in and put a commercial use in that building, but this commercial use isn't meeting the standards, how do you not end up with commercial uses that are totally different? I mean, so that's a change of use. Pardon me? It's a change of use or an expansion. Yeah, yeah I. I guess I would go back to um, the opinion I expressed at the last meeting, and that is, I don't know how I feel about these issues. Uh, I don't even know what the legal landscape is. Yeah. And that's why we need to contact the town attorney. So that rather than going around in circles, I piss on each can, other, um, you know, let's find out what we can and cannot do. And then we can uh, talk about what we might want to do, if anything. Well, it's a very important question is how is that different than when we do offer to go approve a, a use or permit to somebody that's good for what two years three three years they don't use it no, they lose that value right right that's that is right. but but that's um, a little different I mean, on the commercial development, they have 36 months. Right. But and, it's the same with any permit. So if it's one year or three years, if they don't get a substantial start within that time frame, then it's void. That's my, no big deal. That's yeah, the way it is. Yeah. My understanding is the question you were raising was very different than that. Mm -hmm. That it was, as Craig described, that somebody, developer A, you know, got approval under under um, under a uh, under this ordinance for a car lot, used car lot. Car lot goes belly up. We've got two or three examples in town where that's happened, where they got approvals under this ordinance, and you know, for whatever reason, Belgrade can't really support a used car lot. Um, you know, just a bad decision, business decision, um, and uh, it stays vacant, unused for. Whatever the time, two years, three years, five years, ten years. Um, the question uh, is, can that, um, if it, well, if somebody comes in and wants to put a retail store under the current ordinance, it's very clear that's a change in use, and they have to get approval. If somebody comes in and wants to put another car lot there, the question is, do they need approval or not? And and I don't know what the answer to that. I. At the moment, I think the answer is no, they do not. But um, but I thought that's the question that you were asking. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I think we need to get some advice from the town attorney uh, before we go beating each other around the head and shoulders. Well, I agree with that, but I think uh, it's, a, it's going to be a big issue. It is a big issue. It's no issue. Well, how about the selection? What's the where do they stand? In this? Are we getting direction? Are you getting direction? You brought it up. Are you getting uh, input from the town office manager or the select people or what? And why are we talking about this now? I I thought that it's all that he has. Um, um, the one that he has is that they are businesses in town that are attending that box. So then there's no good definition of grandfather that yeah. you can go by. Right, exactly. And I know, I know that. But again, uh I want to I want I want to get some indication from spot management in town. That's a select people. Well, I don't disagree with you, Pete, but I, I think the time to do that is after we figure out uh how thick the ice is under is, you know, it, it is this something that a town like Belgrade can even deal with since we don't have town-wide zoning? If the answer is no, that's it. We're done. Uh, there's no, no need to go to the select board or anybody else. If, on the other hand, the town attorney advises you can do it under certain circumstances, here's some possible things to think about, 
and we and we as a board are thinking of going in that direction, then I think we should we should uh, let the uh, town manager and the select board know. Well, I think I uh, I understand where you're coming from. It's just a matter of approach. I think I agree with you. I would rather have get the leadership from the board. When you're running the run the business, it's time with the business. You get you take the leadership from the from the uh, the board. The board sets sets pretty much the, the uh, goal strategy that they're the, that they're they're in charge of how the particular business uh, operations are going to go, and that's what the board's there for. So. I okay, so, that, so so I think what he's saying is if legally there's no round and there's no discussing out anyway, so we'll, we'll find that out. Right. If, 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 that's if, what he's saying. Like, hey, let's go to the attorney and see if there's even any legal rounds or well, yeah, do it. Yes, no, and then if it's yeah, I, you, know, you can do it that way. Take a lot of time. A lot of that on the part of the you know the low low the uh, the staff fee mm -hmm. that sucks. Or you know, you take it from the other direction. Okay. Our time is limited, the staff's time is limited. You know, where's the wood one? Pete, right. you know, I got a real issue with your approach on this. Why didn't you not bring this up when we discussed this very subject at our last meeting? When we decided that we were, were going to come up with questions for the town attorney rather than, you know, going to the select board. Why didn't you bring it up when it was more time appropriate? Okay, because I wanted to find out where it's going. Okay, so listen, I think. My, my opinion is staying, and I think it's the way we're going to go, is uh, the the letter of draft, where I think we should kick it out to Mr. Hans, and Mr. Hans can talk to the town manager and present it to the town manager. So the planning board to get you. Well, the question came from the uh, CEO not having ordinances. Okay. So, so you are looking for direction on how to go about that. So, so I think the the uh, the bo your boss is the town manager. So we, I think we complied with uh, getting feedback from the board. The board is not quite in agreement, but we have drafted a letter for the uh, lawyer if you so who need it. So you go and talk to the town manager. The town manager can present it to us at the board, and if they say to say, yeah, call the call the lawyer. You have the letter ready for it. We don't want to get in the situation though that. This board was in um, back in when I first joined the board, where we had to get permission from the select board and the town manager every time we needed legal advice. It became basically a gag order, and uh, and um, they need to know about it. They need to understand what we're doing, and we've done that. You know, we they've always the town managers have always been informed of when we seek legal advice. Uh, we've even been encouraged by a former town manager to get legal advice more often than we did, um, and um, and uh, to get it in writing so that we could keep a record of all these opinions, so that we didn't have to duplicate effort and and waste the town's money. Um, and um, um, I, I would be totally opposed to uh, basically um, being treated like we don't have any brains of our own. Well, let's we put this to vote, do a motion, and we're going to send it to the board. Now. Yeah, gonna take it no, send it to, send, Should we put a vote in the board? Uh, put a motion to place the uh, letter that Mr. Uh, Silla put together to send it to a lawyer? I don't know that. I just want to resolve the disagreement somehow in a amicable way. I feel it should go to the lawyers. I, I, I agree. Uh, the question is. Uh, do we really need some advice from the attorneys on how to to do this? So I think we we should go through it. Sounds like it's costing. I mean, I'm not saying we should do it just because it doesn't cost the town anymore. But uh, the idea of we're spending money to uh, do something we're not sure we're going to complete to, to give answers to what we can and cannot do. And if, you know, they're on a retainer. It's not like because we're asking these questions, we're just spent ten thousand dollars of the town's money. Right. Okay. So, I, I'm, I'm still unclear what question we're voting on. I, yeah, I, so I, well, I, I okay. understand why the grandfather. I, I don't think I'm quite clear why the grandfather is an issue. Like why we're bring, bringing it to the lawyers. What exactly about the grandfather issue? 
is the question. Okay, so I understand it, right? It's, and it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not clear for a quality conformance officer mm -hmm. what grandfather means. Mm -hmm. If there's a term limit to it, or if there's not, right? So when people come with questions about that topic, he doesn't know what to do because there's well, no the ordinance, the date of the ordinance pre and, and post. No, there's no definition of grandfather okay. in our ordinance. Clear in terms of term and uh, what right they give to the person or not. Is that, that's why he he doesn't have when grandfather comes, it's like what what is that going to do? So so the, the question come coming in, we discuss a little bit about it and I thought uh, so that last meeting we agreed that we were going to put a draft to ask the lawyers guidance into it to see how all the town towns are managing this and if actually maybe there's a state that is statue about it. I don't see any problem with that, checking that out because we we want to work on the law, isn't it? We just don't want to uh, make our own rules and decide, well, this is grandfather or this is grandfather. Well, I don't think any of us. Which of me, I don't have the right to say, oh yeah, that's grandfather. I, I have no idea of it. So getting that clarified from the lawyers would give us a better guidance to give hands so he can do his job. Now, that's the, that's my taking to it. So why don't we just ask him what a definition of grandfather and right. be, rather than try to ask all these different questions and and, and just ask, you know, what the definition is there a time frame on grandfathering and a definition of it? And keep it basic with those two questions. And that's the second question, Greg. Is there a definition? Oh, legal definition. Yeah. Uh, that brings up a point that I, I was going to ask George. It, it seems in the, your memo that uh, uh, essentially you're treating existing as grandfather. The word existing is essentially grandfather. grandfather. Yeah, that, that's how I interpret the word most. And, and I guess I got a, a, a comment and tell me if I'm wrong. I don't think grandfathering is even used in the ordinance. No, it's not. Okay. Uh, but the, if you went to page five in uh, the commercial development review ordinance, um, if we took the position that grandfathering is equivalent to existing or vice versa, uh, Article 1B on page five says the expansion of an existing non commercial residential building structure. Uh, and so if we took the position that existing had to be before 2001, um, what would happen to a building that got a permit? What, where, where would they fall in this ordinance? Yeah, if it well, says it had to be there before 2001, but we gave a permit in 2020, now they want to expand. I don't think they'd have to come for a permit. Yeah. We treated that as equal. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Yeah. I think what we really need in there is a definition of grandfather. Right, that's what I was saying. Prior, prior, pre-2001, pre the ordinance, that's what I, I thought grandfathering was. It, I think George is right. It is pre-2001, but I don't think we can treat grandfathering and existing as the same word right. in our ordinance. And right. if we put in a definition of grandfathering, that may come a long ways to, uh, you know, a definition can include the Right. But their permits have had time limits on so, you know, current permits. Yeah, if they, they, if they don't, right. There's no, if they put the business in operation, the permit doesn't expire at all. But right. if they got a permit from us in 2020, operated for five, years. Oh, okay. I thought you were saying that it didn't uh, uh, operate at all. They never established a business that would expire, what, two years later, a year and a half later? Uh, there is an expiration date on that, but, but there if is no buys expiration a property, date. If somebody buys a piece of property that was an operating business and failed, right? And now they, you know, but they buy that piece of property and knowing the business failed, but they want to sit on that property, they're the only ones that lose it if they're not 
you know, trying to redeem that, you know, that that building. I mean, you know, but if they want, if they decide five years down the line, okay, now I want to open up what I originally bought this piece of property for. Well, then, you know, that's what they when at the time they bought it, they knew what they were buying, and that's what they bought. I think the the owner is the only one that loses out by not having an operating business. If they want to have that land just sitting on hold, that that business sitting on hold, though. As an investment. As an and, investment, they're the ones that are losing. And we're also going to have grandfathering from uh, 2018, 2019, in 10 years. You know, so someone comes in and gets a permit from us now, and they get a business up and running, and they get this property all built while they come down with cancer, and they're sick. And five years goes by by the time the kids get around to re upping this. Well, that's still grandfathered, whether it's after 2001 or not. It's permitted and it's grandfathered. Yeah, see, I think that's that's the dilemma because that's why grandfathers never used an ordinances because it means different things to different mm -hmm. people. Um, ah. Sort of like an art. <laughs> Think of here. Somebody had a car lot, and they got a permit, and everything's fine. And uh, their grandfather is under essentially new rules and regulations that might come into play. Um, but if the rules change, and the facility is sitting there doing nothing uh, for twenty years. And the rule was changed to require two acres instead of one acre. Should that individual or whoever owns the property now be able to yeah. go in and put a car dealership in or whatever with half the lot that's required today, but they got the permit at 20 years ago, but the rules have changed since then. And you know, at what point do you let the guy be grandfathered from the new rules? Uh, I say yes, he's grandfathered from that. Because we can keep slapping the rules. We need, that just, we need a lawyer's opinion. Yeah. Unless like the, the property changes hands again and maybe the business was going up when, when they bought it. But, you know, like how many how many times can it be transferred over? But, uh, so that, so, that so where we, there's a change of use or an expansion, then the, yeah. that would have obviously have to comply with the rules in place at the time they have to apply. We we are here to establish it and the definition. We're here to follow the law and the definition. So that's why we need a lawyer's opinion. Getting back to Rich's point, we um do you Rich, do you have any suggestions on how that first question could be reworded to the captain what you're saying? Not specifically, other than what I was saying, is that uh, you know, to the, the town develop a definition of grandfather. Uh, typically, you don't see that in too many. Uh, it's there, but as you said, it. Uh, yeah, in fact, one saying. opinion we got from the town attorney, where we used in our question, used the term grandfather is. He said something, you know, like, well, nobody uses the term grandfathering in, in the, you know, in ordinances. That's why we need to keep it basic and ask him for the definition of grandfathering. And um, the, the time frame on grandfathering. Yeah, and I'm fine with whatever people That's decide to do. It's just I, I would need so, help on the wording because I, I don't know how to write that. I'm having a problem with the, um, well, keep it simple, just like I just said. You don't yeah, need but, long sentences for everything. You know, um, uh, this is so frustrating to me to sit there and beat and hash and beat and hash because I've been in business for 27 years and I'm a straightforward, short on words, boom, 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 let's do it this way. And I get why I have to do it this way, but not everything needs a bunch of words. Definitely, what's the definition of grandfathering? 
And how long does grandfathering go? And do we use the word grandfathering? Simple, boom, now we got our answers. Then we can move from there. I agree with that. I think so. I and, agree with um, that. you know, to ask all these questions, so predate existing, the term existence or include those predate of the adoption of the ordinance. Well, we're gonna be screwed in five years because there's gonna be stuff being grandfathered after the ordinance. Mm -hmm. I think, I think the question, I'm sorry, I interrupted. Go ahead, go ahead. I was saying, I think the question is, is the board correct to interpret existing to include things that uh, predate? I think that's true. Existing it, it are things that predate, but there's also existing things that don't predate that we don't want to lose track of or you know, I just, uh, uh, the existing ones do predate, or, you know, existing ones that predate are grandfather. Uh, that's my opinion. Um, but it, it really, the way the, the ordinance is worded, we can't use existing as equivalent to grandfather right. because. Well, the it's question saying. is grandfather. That's our question. Not a, like I know. I, I agree. The question is, what is grandfather? And you know, so, I, so what are the dates pertain? So can we, what can we what can we put in the? Order? I know you're saying all all existing is is grandfather. I mean, but some existing wouldn't pertain to grandfather. Yeah. Is that the one you heard? Right. Yeah. Will be there any consensus in adding Craig's um, questions? to the question that we're gonna to ask to the lawyers and putting them together with Mr. Seals. Both set of questions. Well, it just, sounds like the focus has changed from what we discussed at the last meeting, which was to uh, figure, figure out if we could respond to Hans's question. Now the question has just been simplified to what is grandfather? Yeah. And that's and, what his question was originally. And that's exactly what his question was originally. Is that the right uh, hands? Well, no, it, he went beyond that. Hans said, and does it end, and when does it end? Or is it for uh, perpetuity? And that's, that's just true. exactly that's what I just said, right? And my two questions. I don't we, even have, know. we got both the answers right I, there. I don't think you even need the second question. The, if he answers the, the question properly, what is grandfather? He's going to put dates in. Um, when it pertains and when it doesn't. So the thing is that he will answer that in a little vacuum because he doesn't have our ordinance. So I think, but I think he has he, our ordinance. Uh, but I guess um, he, every ordinance we have, he's gone over. They don't have it. They just don't have it at the tip of the hands. What that? They don't have it at the tip of the hands. Of course they do. Right there. Then we do it. He, okay. Every time we ask him a question about our ordinances, he has to look it up. Every time. I will um, say that we can include those two questions as simple as it. And then I think there's this concern from all the board members on understanding with more clarity the, the span that that can be. And we can probably send both set of questions, yours, as simple as they are, and what Mr. Tzu had put together. And uh, if that will be the step, if this is becoming a tension within the board, we will kick this uh, document to hands and make his hands report to the town manager. He can talk to the town manager, and the town manager can present it to the select board, and they can decide. They can decide to send it to the lawyers or not. I think we have uh, opposite views in the kind of question that we should be doing. And uh, everybody needs their uh, answers in the way they want to phrase it. So it's going to be fair to have your questions answered and have Mr. Seal answer. Okay, so we'll do it. So we'll do it. So we're gonna... 
We're going to add one part, another part to this. George is a suggested yeah. uh, uh, writer and put in, you know, what is grandfathering, what's the timeline? So yeah. you have that and just give, give the whole thing to the attorney, hope the attorney go run from there. Okay, That's so it. so are we going to do it directly from here or we're going to we're going to have hands for people that do uh, the select board? Well, we need the answer then. Okay, let's give it to Hans, take it, give it to Hans, and Hans can go right with it. Okay. All right. You can do it that way. Did that work for you, Mr. CEO? Sure. I will ask you. <laughs> Great. Um, is this, did I capture your question correctly? And I realized that um, you don't like how wordy I am, but um, what non residential uses are grandfathered under the commercial development review ordinance? Uh, or when, not what? When are non residential uses grandfathered? Is not under the commercial development re review ordinance and is grandfathering in perpetuity. And in perpetuity is what? the time frame. Yeah, forever. Forever. But oh, you want to ask how how long how long grandfather is for? Yeah, because I was kind of writing uh, what is grandfathering and is there a time limit? Um to grandfathering and to include permits given after the ordinance was developed if the if it goes idle for a, any amount of time. Good. That's fine. That's good. That's good. Something similar to yeah, that. That's mm -hmm. better. I think I think this is a very uh, it has complete value in the it I think uh the response from the lawyer was satisfied with exactly what you were asked. Yeah, and even though grandfathering is not used, whatever terminology is used. He'll correct you us. Know, yeah, but at, start with grandfathering because that's what we're talking about. Right. And uh, I want it to include past, and I want it to include what after the per after the ordinance was developed. Mm -hmm. Both, because we're going to run into it. Right. As yeah. time goes by, Permits that we have already approved mm -hmm. are going to go idle and people are going to want to revive them. I understand that. Yeah. And their property values, you know, once they get a permit, their property value goes up. So if we decide, oh, that's only for three years, no, no, sorry you bought that, Bob, but, you know, that investment, you only got three years for it. Um, I, I struggle with that. Thank you, Senator Paul. That's a valid uh, I think the greater problem isn't where permits have been issued. It's businesses that existed before permits, and there's no written record of what were there. Because this board changes in the course of five years, and there's a new person sitting here. Who's going to know the history? Yeah. Who's going to validate that? Yeah, that was a big... I mean, that's the nature of town government, the yes. institutional memory. And, you know, and again, it's just not in the past. It's right now. This stuff that we're permitting is going to be grandfathered. It's, it's going to be, at some point, people are going to want to grandfather, use the grandfather. I mean, you know, to a certain extent, this all, you're bringing it back to where this all started. I mean, Gary Fuller had apparently firsthand knowledge of this issue of regarding grandfathering, uh, uh, a business that was started prior to 2001, the, the, the uh, uh, effective date of this ordinance uh, in Belgrade Depot. The case went to court. 
and he's the only one that he, he never showed it to us. He never, he, but he never, you know, he, he kind of characterized it, but, you know, not in sufficient detail that we ever really knew what, what it was about. And, and uh, I actually did a search of the Supreme Court, Superior Court records, and I couldn't find anything. Um, so there's may or may not be information out there about this from court decisions that we don't know about and only the town attorney does. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, that institutional knowledge got lost with Gary's passing. In 10 years, it's going to be a bike shop on the old road that's grandfather. <laughs> Go back. So, so we, I was saying, of course, we, when we gonna, uh, you're going to take that, uh, Mr. Alexander's questions together with these and um, you will go to talk to Lorna and Lorna will talk to send to the select board and from there you guys go. Is okay. that is that a fair game for you? Sure. Okay. I'll try to um, I do. Oh, it's a big enough week. I'm gonna I mean I'm just jotting this down. I'll try to email somewhere yeah. bring it by or whatever. Yeah. Okay, good. I think a lot of the answer is going to be it depends on what you put in the order. Well, you know, the answer might be the town can't do a blessed thing because it doesn't have town line zoning. Because the court cases I did find where towns where the court found that they could specify the life lifespan of grandfathering. It was because they had town wide zoning. Ah, interesting. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. From the very beginning, it might be a quick, easy answer. Yeah. All right. Hopefully, it will be like that. So, uh, that said, the next item in the agenda is approval of minutes. So, minutes of August 3rd, minutes of August 17th, and August 24th. So, um, Mr. Baker and Mrs. Morrell, if you guys want to wrap up, I think you guys are good. We have a eight it's eight thirty now. I think that's that the approval business is only for that for the rest of us here. The uh, I had a couple of comments on oh, minutes. Yeah, and, oh, and there okay. one set of uh, one meeting where Rich was actually an active voting right. member. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Never mind. So I did not have sorry. Okay. <laughs> I would like to give you a little bit so I can finish it out. I would like to get up and wait. Yeah. So if any if any plans you wish to. I'm good. Okay, good. So um are we ready for August third? All right. And we're going to the floor to um um board to give um Back yeah, my comments were on the 17th. Yeah, okay. So, any comments on August 3rd? Um, I have a couple of suggestions, um, for clarification or just word changes. Um, under new business, um, number one, um, under um, discussion, the second line, uh, the um, sentence that begins, this plan would allow for the most erosion control, stormwater runoff, that's kind of awkward language. I, I would suggest uh, for the most control of erosion, strike out control and stormwater runoff. So it would read, this plan would allow for the most control of ero um, erosion and stormwater runoff. Can I, can I suggest you to say for the best erosion control runoff? That's fine. Okay. So it will be, again, it will be- I don't know it, if it's gonna be the best, but that's fine. Um, a better? Or better erosion control runoff? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. This plan will allow for a, for a better efficient, yeah. uh, okay, for a more efficient 
You were most, for, most efficient erosion control. For a most efficient erosion and storm water runoff out of the possible options. And on the last page, um, there's a lot of the discussion we had um, missing under discussion. Um, uh, Board of Reeds, Stuart Seal made a list of things that the planning board will, will need to address in the near future. The top priorities will be reviewing the ordinances to conform with the new Affordable Housing Act. Um, I would suggest adding to that the board agreed to start work on this task uh, given uh, the state deadline. And then under the second bullet, uh, reviewing the subdivision, first off, application should be just app application should be uh, strike the as application to conform with uh, the current ordinances for the subdivision application. Um, I don't know if more language needs to be placed there, but um, my recollection is that there wasn't any obvious decision made or a consensus reached, and and we just decided that. Um, we would uh, discuss some more. Um, that was the night we delegated homework to a couple of people. Uh, that was the, no, uh, no, 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 no. Um, you may. Rec I had volunteered or offered to do if if the board decided um, that a subdivision, a new subdivision application was needed. Um, uh, and that was our top priority, other than the Affordable Housing Act. That you know, I might be willing to uh, work on that. But then there was no, we right. just went in all kinds of different directions, and no decision was ever made. So um, I was trying to capture that, or maybe it's not necessary because no decision was made. But uh, so I, you could, we could leave that second bullet as is, except just change. Strike out the two S's. Okay, any other changes to the minutes of August 3rd? All right. So I need a motion. Uh, I need a motion to approve this minutes. I make a motion to approve the August 3rd minutes. All right. As as the being amended. As the amendment. Yeah. Yeah. I'll second it. So I have a, a, a motion from Mr. Certain and a second from Mr. Sakara. So we're going to go for, to vote on this. So, um, Mr. Baker. Oh, yeah, he, he wasn't. He wasn't even there. He's not. He's not. Wasn't. He wasn't out there. Okay, Mr. Uh, uh, Sakara. Yes. Mr. Uh, Sergeant. Yes. Mr. Seal. Yes. Mr. Alexander. Yes. And Mr. Ranga, we will approve the minutes as amended for August third. Mr. Baker. Mr. Baker. He was an alternate. Six members. Yeah. All right. So and that's actually the case in the 17th. 17th. I wasn't there. So yeah. Oh, you weren't oh, there at all? Yeah, I thought you came late. No, no, no. I wasn't there. Oh, okay. Mr. Baker's active acting. Oh. Acting then. So we open the floor now for changes to minutes of uh, August 17th. I've got uh, questions of, uh, under new business, uh, John, for author, for author, for author or whatever. Uh, the numbers don't seem to uh, fit here. It says the current second line, the current camp is 8,080 square feet, and the rebuilt camp would be 8,752 square feet. And then down below it says the existing building is just over 900 square feet, and the proposed structure will be 1080. Um, those numbers don't drive. That second sentence has to be off by 
thousand yeah. feet. I'm not sure where I do. I don't have the answer. Yeah. Other than those numbers can't. I think happen. the easiest thing is to strike that second. Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah. It's completely yeah. wrong. I agree. Strike that out. Okay. The other one I had is uh, under decision. Um, the board will conduct a site visit on August 24th at 4 p.m. in order to evaluate possible options the applicant has, such as modifying the proposed site plan or staying with the building permit that was previously approved by the code enforcement officer. I think uh, we, it wasn't approved by the code enforcement officer, right? but should they maybe previously submitted to the code enforcement and that's all I had other than George Seal misspelling uh, and the uh, number two one second page. It's got an extra E. Right. But, Any other changes to uh, the minutes of August 17th. I just have one minor one, uh, and that's to finish the sentence on page three under CEO update, uh, the second paragraph under discussion. The board table this topic until next meeting, at which time they will come up with um, a question the, for the question for the town attorney. Yeah. Any other changes? So I will entertain a motion uh, for a full minutes. I make a motion that we approve the minutes of uh, August 17th, 2000. As the man. So we get a motion in the floor for Mr. Baker and a second for Mr. Seal. We're ready to go. Mrs. Zafara. Oh, I'm sorry. I vote yes. Mr. Baker. Yes. Mr. Servant. Yes. Mr. Seal. Yes. Mr. Alexander. Yes. And me surrendered. We all uh it's five votes in favor, no one opposed. So the minutes of uh, August 17th are approved as amended. And do we need to approve the notes for Mr. C? Well, I was going to come up with something to go along with it. So, well, uh, she's trying something different. Uh, right. We we had our set of notes eight, August twenty fourth. Oh, that that's um that's my write up of the uh, site visit. Okay, so and you did one. I just asked, I just sent that to Hans and asked him to make it part of the public record for okay. the project for him. So we, we don't have to approve this one. No. Okay, good. Excellent. So I think with that, I will make a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Oh, uh, we'll see. Do we have any other items? No. So. Okay, All right, and a second. I'll second. Okay, so Mr. Sergeant did the motion to adjourn, and Mr. Sakaro has seconded. Bo, Mr. Sakaro. Yes. Mr. Sergeant. Yes. Mr. Steele. Yep. Mr. Alexander. Yes. And Mr. Ryan, we approve it, and so we adjourn.